Right then, it's time to talk Premier League. So we're back with the almost weekly, depending on when the Premier League plays series of my Premier League predictions. Uh, last week we did game week 33 and uh, my predictions weren't the best, as you're about to see. But game week 34 is a double game week, so there's quite a bit of football for us to predict. Um, so let's just jump into it. I'm going to start off with my game week 33 predictions, then jump on in. I'm going to start off with Tuesday's fixtures and we'll have to wonder if this is Crystal Palace. And I predicted 1-0, it was actually 2-0 to Wolves. And it was a huge, huge win for Wolves as they ended Roy's unbeaten run. Wolves technically opened the scoring through an own goal and then sealed it with a penalty to the death. Palace had their chances but could not get past Saar. He was making some, some brilliant saves throughout the match. Then we move on to Aston Villa versus Fulham. I predicted 3-1 to Villa. It's actually 1-0. And it wasn't a high scoring match as I expected from Villa, but they still came away with all three points. It was Mings who bagged the only goal of the match which saw Villa launch to a European spot. Um, they then got dragged out of that European spot, but for now they're in a European spot. And then we move on to Leeds versus Leicester City. I played 2-1 to Leicester, it was actually a one or draw. And in a match where I wanted both teams to lose, a draw was acceptable. Leeds took the lead through Sinistera, who is now injured, before Vardy scored his second goal of the season to level it all up in Yorkshire. I can't believe Vardy's still playing Premier League football, man. That is actually insane. <laughs> like, I swear Bro's 50% Red Bull at this point. And then we move on to Wednesday's fiction. We start off with Nottingham Forest versus Brighton Hove Albion. I predicted 1 0 to Forest. It's actually 3 1. What a game. Forest went behind in true Forest fashion before fighting back and routing Brighton in a spectacular win. Now, to be fair, Brighton did look tied after their FA Cup clash, but Forest set up well to counter them and reap the rewards. What a player Danilo is, man. Oh my god. Some Brazilian magic from him. Phenomenal. And then we move on to Chelsea versus Brentford. And now this is a match I actually forgot happened. Um, but I predicted 2-1 to Brentford. And it was 2-0 to Brentford. Chelsea fell to another loss at Stamford Bridge as Lampard has failed to pick up any points so far during his tenure. It wasn't complete domination by the Bees, but Chelsea just could not find the net and they paid the price. Then we move on to West Ham United versus Liverpool. I predicted 3-2 to Liverpool. It was actually 2-1. West Ham opened the scoring and showed that it wasn't going to be an easy match for Liverpool, but Liverpool responded six minutes later through Cody Gakpo. It was a very end-to-end -end game with both sides having their fair share of chances to score the winner, but it was literally a massive header which gave the visitors all three points and they managed to hang on for the rest of the match. Manchester City versus Arsenal. Now this was the big title match. I predicted 3-1 to Manchester City and it was actually 4-1 to Manchester City. And City dominated Arsenal. They took the lead in seven minutes through De Bruyne. Arsenal did grab a consolation goal through holding, but that only made things 3-1. Haaland then grabbed his goal at the death to finish off the route. And my god, while Arsenal still do sit at the top of the league, they are two points clear of Manchester City, but Manchester City have two games in hand. So it's going to be a very, very tasty title race, I can tell you that much. And then we move on to Thursday's fixtures and we start with Southampton versus Bournemouth. I predict 2-1 to Bournemouth. It was actually 1-0, and it was another massive win for the Cherries as the Saints stayed rooted to the bottom of the league. Southampton thought they had levelled it up in the 90th minute, but it was ruled out as offside, and it saw the visitors came all three points. And then we move on to Everton versus Newcastle. I predicted 3-0 to Newcastle. It's actually 4-1, so I got the margin correct at least. It was another domination job from the Magpies as they eased past Everton at Goodison. It was a wild goal that drifted in for the Toffees, but it was an easy match for the Geordies regardless. I'm still not sure how that Everton goal went in to be honest, but... We move. And finally, Tottenham Hotspur versus Manchester United. I predicted 3-1 to United. It was actually a 2 all draw. And United went ahead within 7 minutes and then doubled their lead before the second half. But somehow, Manchester United managed to bottle it against Spurs. You know, bottle job FC. And they threw away their two-goal lead to end up tying all the points. But what a fight back from Tottenham, man. I mean, they get rid of Stellini and then suddenly they start scoring goals and tying games crazy so yeah those were my predictions for game week 33 as you can see we got none of them right what a shock but anyway we're going to move swiftly on to game week 34 and we're going to start with the saturday fixtures and crystal palace versus west ham united now this is a london derby as palace hosts west ham at Selhurst park only three points separate either side with west ham having the worst season of the two so far both teams have picked up some better form recently palace as well as driven by the appointment of roy hodgkinson whereas West Ham stuck by Moyes, who has seen West Ham pick up some very important points over the last few weeks, and performed well in Europe as well. Both teams suffered a loss in the midweek games, so we'll be eager to put that result behind them, and despite the goofing goals, both teams do look quite even matched against one another. I mean, Palace have been scoring more than West Ham, but other than that, they're pretty evenly matched in my opinion. 
West Ham held out well against Liverpool. And that's a Liverpool side that's come into form as well. So they did pretty, pretty well there. And Palace just could not find the net in the West Midlands. It's a very tough one to call. But I think Palace will just about be able to take it. I'm going to say 2-1. As I said, I think it'll be a tough match for both sides as each will set up to frustrate the other. Palace will have the advantage of that home support on their side. Um, you know, Selhurst Park is fairly well known for its atmosphere. They haven't really produced any ma mad major atmosphere this season, but maybe this will be the match to do it, you know, a little London derby. And I think, you know, that atmosphere could play into the result if it's really there, if it's in tip-top form. You know, I think Selhurst Park will bring the atmosphere. I don't think Palace have what it takes to overcome the Hammers, but it's going to be a very tough match for either side, so it could go either way, to be honest. Then we move on to Brighton and Hove Albion versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Brighton are in desperate need of a win, as they don't want to see the European chances slip through their fingers. They host a Wolf side that is looking to new distance itself on the relegation zone, as they, and honestly they look to have escaped at the moment. Brighton went 120 minutes in the FA Cup semi-final, and that showed in their performance against Forest, looking very leggy, especially in that second half. Wolves have had it easier, feeling a bit fresher than their opponents, and are also coming off the back of a win too. It is a tough one to call as Brian have been a brilliant side, but losing the FA Cup semi-final in that manner, then losing the game midweek to a side that was in the relegation zone would have definitely knocked their confidence. We could see that continue to affect them against Wolves. Wolves will be full of confidence after beating Palace, and should feel confidence going into this match as well. But I'm going to say it's a one all draw. I think it'll be a tie. Brian will have their home fans backing them, and while the Amex isn't exactly known for its atmosphere, it will definitely give the side a lift at a time when they need one. Wolves have got the dog in them, they've got the wolf in them, um, and they're definitely going to fight and make it tough for the home side, but Brian do have the quality they need to get something from this very important clash. It's understandable that Brian are feeling the hit from what happened in the FA Cup, but the sooner they overcome that, the better it will be for the team and the better for their European hopes. I do hope Brian make Europe this season, um, they're a side I enjoy watching, but the competition is very, very tough, so... Honestly, any team could take it in that top, like, I guess the top eight, maybe top seven. Any team could get Europe, so it'd be very interesting to see. And then we've on to Brentford versus Nottingham Forest. Now, this is a huge clash for Forest as they travel to London to face the Bees. Brentford are a very formidable side when they play at home and are very, very tough to beat there. This was seen by the extensive unbeaten run they went on earlier in the season. Nottingham Forest are not a good side away from home either, but they might have turned that around after a sensational performance against Liverpool. Forest will be riding high after the three massive points they claimed which saw them jump out of the relegation zone and looking to carry that form into the clash in London. Last time out, these two sides played out a 2-2 draw and it was quite a controversial one at that, with the VAR ultimately costing Forest three points in my opinion, but I would say that I'm a Forest fan. I think with that little background to this clash, I think both sides may be a bit fired up for this match. The, the fan base definitely will be. I'm going to say one all. Despite Brentford being brilliant away from home and Forest looking like a semi-professional side at some points this season, their recent upstick in form from Forest will fill the players with a lot of confidence and there's no reason Forest can't get anything from this match. It'll be a very tight match, that's for sure. Brentford will set up to be very tough to break down and they normally are at home anyway. But with lots of players starting to score for Forest, they have more than one outlet to grab a goal. It was just Brennan Johnson and Morgan Gibbs-White. Now it's Morgan Gibbs-White, Brennan Johnson, Danilo, Awaniwi, um... I'd say Nico Williams, but unfortunately he is injured for this clash. Yeah, I think Forest, they have what it takes to get what they need in this clash. And a very, very important point. I mean, I'd love three points, but I think if we're being realistic, we can grab a draw. And it'll be a very, very important point. And then we move on to the Sunday fixtures and we start off with Manchester United versus Aston Villa. Now, this is a clash between two sides that are enjoying some really good form at the moment. Manchester United currently occupy the last Champions League spot, whereas Aston Villa find themselves level on points with this place, Tottenham only below them on goal difference. It'll be a very huge clash between the two sides, who will both be hoping to play European football next season. Manchester United bottled their two-goal lead in the aforementioned Spurs match, whilst Villa got past Fulham with a 1-0 win. Both sides are playing some brilliant attacking football at the moment, so it'll be very interesting to see how each side sets up for this huge, huge clash. Both teams have been experiencing some similar form recently, with United winning three of their last five, while Villa have won four, each both drawing once. Both teams are also enjoying great attacking returns with players like Rashford and Watkins playing some of their best football so far. I'm going to say 2 all. Both teams are in some great form at the moment and I can honestly see it ending in a draw. As mentioned, both sides play some great attacking football with Ten Hag and Emery changing their respective teams' fortunes for the better. United have shown that they're still not 100% as they're due with Spurs, but Villa will be taking some positive momentum with them into this clash. It should be a very interesting one to watch and I'm rooting for the villains in this one. Let me move on to Fulham versus Manchester City. Now cast your mind back to when Fulham travelled to Manchester 
and it took a Haaland penalty at the death to ensure that City got all three points. Now Fulham, they can be a very tough side to break down, that's no different at home. It'll be a very, very huge match in the race for the title as Fulham have the potential to cause an upset and possibly throw Arsenal a lifeline. Fulham have been in some decent form recently, keeping themselves in the top half and grabbing some very important points to stay there. What more needs to be said about Manchester City though? They're on a 17 game unbeaten run in all competitions at the moment and firmly in the driving seat for the title. And we'll be looking to avoid dropping any more points in that final run up to the title race end of season thing. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that, but I'm going to say 3 1 to City. I can't see City dropping any points in London, to be honest. This isn't the strongest Fulham side as Mitrovic is still serving his suspension. I think it was a bit harsh, but I get you got to send a message that you can't be doing that to officials. But yeah, the cottagers do look okay going forward without him, but it is clear that they are missing him in the field. Manchester City on the other hand are a full strength side and have the depth they need to keep up in the title race. This is a match that could potentially see City move above Arsenal and take their place at the top of the league, so it should be a very interesting one nonetheless. And then we move on to Bournemouth vs Leeds United. Now this is another very important match for Leeds as they find themselves just a point above the relegation zone. Bournemouth are 6 points clear of Leeds so don't exactly need the points but would be very important for them as they could see them move even further away from the relegation zone and pretty much save them another season in the Premier League. Leeds United have not been enjoying good results in their recent matches, losing 3 of their last 5, winning 1 and drawing the rest. They don't look very threatening in their matches either, especially at the moment and the quality of football they're playing is not great either. Bournemouth are on the up, gaining some very important points which has seen them surge out of the relegation zone and look pretty safe at the moment. I'm going to say 2-0 to Bournemouth. I can't see the Cherries being too trolled by Leeds. Bournemouth generally look quite good at home and Leeds can't really seem to catch a break at the moment. I can see Leeds struggling quite a bit in this match as I don't think Bournemouth will give them anything or let them build anything in the vitality. So it should be fairly easy for the Cherries. And then we move on to Newcastle United versus Southampton. Top 3 Newcastle host Bournemouth for the Southampton in what should be another easy match for the Magpies. Newcastle have found a new level of form, scoring 10 goals in the last two matches, which itself is an insane stat. Recent form does not bode well for the Saints, who find themselves rock bottom in the league, winless in four, and only grabbing a single point in their last five. The Magpies have been enjoying a brilliant season so far, and deservedly sit in a European spot. I must say, I'm shocked to see them in third, but fair play to the Magpies. Newcastle have dominated their last two matches, and have only lost one in the past five, so they should be riding high. They dominated Tottenham and Everton and I can honestly see similar happening at St James's Park. I'm going to say 5-0 to Newcastle. I don't think anyone would be surprised to see Newcastle dominate Southampton and that would only nail them down to the bottom of the table even more. More than they are already. Southampton do show fight in their clashes but this is one match that I don't think they'll be able to win. Newcastle, this Newcastle side is something else. They dominated Tottenham from the off and while it took them a while to get going at Everton, they also dominated them. All I can say is good luck Southampton but I want you to lose. Then move on to Liverpool versus Tottenham Hotspur. Spurs travelled to Liverpool to face a side that is coming into some better form recently. Liverpool have enjoyed a mini resurgence as they start picking up points in their quest for European football next season. Tottenham currently occupy the last European spot. I'll be looking to keep that spot to ensure they have some European football next season as well. Unfortunately for the London side, however, Liverpool have started winning games again and playing some competent football, picking up three wins and two draws in their last five matches. Spurs have not been enjoying much success, winning one, drawing two and losing two. One of those losses was that domination by Newcastle. It'll be very interesting to see how these sides match up as they've both not been having great seasons by their standards. I'm saying 3-1 to Liverpool. I think it's fair to say that Liverpool are currently the better side. A lot of that is down to the players and a whole raft of them returning from injury as well. It's no coincidence that Liverpool have started picking up points as these players have returned. Spurs do look a little shell-shocked and I can't see them mounting any challenge at the moment. They don't really see them themselves. I think they'll be playing to keep top 5, so I can't really see them mounting any sort of successful challenge for top 4. But this Liverpool side will hit them from the off, and honestly, they'd be lucky to avoid a repeat of that Newcastle result. Then we move on to the Monday night clash of Leicester City versus Everton. Now this is a huge relegation scrap here as Leicester host Everton. Both teams currently find themselves in the relegation zone with only a point separating either side. Both sides have not been enjoying good seasons either, and have both made managerial changes in an attempt to stave off relegation hasn't worked so far. Leicester grabbed a huge 3 points against Wolves last week before sharing the points with Leeds. Everton impressively drew with Palace before getting dominated by Newcastle. Both teams were in desperate need of points. The, they'll, pressure, they'll pile on the, both the pressure and the tension for these two sides and it should make it a more of a tight clash. Leicester's form has improved under Dean Smith though he's only been managing them for 3 games. You can't really judge him based on that but there has been some improvement in the matches I've seen. I'm saying one all. I can see both sides sharing the points in the East Midlands. Both teams have been shipping goals recently and struggling to score goals too. 
At the moment I would say Leicester are the strongest of the two sides but it's not by much. As we know Everton like to step quite defensively and when they press high they can cause teams problems. We saw that early on against Newcastle. But they might be able to get something from this match. Then we move on to the Tuesday fixture of Arsenal vs Chelsea. Now this is a huge clash in the race for the title as Arsenal hosts Chelsea. It's a match they need to win if they want to keep the race competitive. I think after the run they've had, Arsenal fans will be looking forward to this clash. Recently they've seen their title hopes take a massive blow after massive blow after massive blow, drawing three and losing a big one to City. Chelsea though have been having an awful season. Currently seeing in the bottom half of the league and on their third manager of the season in Lampard. Technically fourth if you want to catch that interim manager. Lampard is winless in the league and in fact any of the matches he's been in charge for. Arsenal have kept the title race very interesting keeping themselves competitive with only two points separating the top two sides. Getting a result here would be huge for Arsenal and I think it's going to be a 3-0 win. I think Arsenal grab a result here. Chelsea have not been great this season especially since sacking Tuchel oh, all that time ago. Uh, Bowley's new regime has not gone off to a great start either despite with the money he's shoveled into the club. Arsenal have Riley caught flack as bottlers after their recent run of results but a failure to get points here would basically seal their fate. It would be funny if Chelsea got something from this match but ultimately I can't see them managing that and I think they'll slide further down the table as a consequence. We could see Chelsea in the relegation scrap. That is insane. The Wednesday fixtures and we start with Liverpool versus Fulham. Now this is the reverse fixture of that thrilling opening clash at Craven Cottage. Both teams have enjoyed very different seasons but Liverpool have fought back and are currently 8 points clear. Fulham have not had a bad season by any standard, currently occupying 10th place, looking nailed on for another season in the Premier League. I think Liverpool will be really looking forward to this clash, especially more than Fulham after their main man Mitrovic is still unavailable, and he caused them a lot of problems in that first match. This should provide some comfort to Liverpool's back line, as at the very least, Liverpool don't have to deal with him. Liverpool haven't been solid in defence as they were last season, they still ship at least one goal a game on average, and I mean, they conceded twice to Forest, who are not a great side away from home. It's a similar tale for Fulham, who seem to concede quite often too. I'm going to say 3-1 to Liverpool though. I can see Liverpool keeping all three points in Merseyside. This is a Liverpool side that are getting back to their best, and Fulham will be another victim of Liverpool's front line. Speaking of that front line, they're at full strength, and Klopp has many options off the bench too, so... Yeah, it's not looking good for Fulham. It'll be tough for Fulham to keep them out. Um, Liverpool do make their own defensive errors though, and I can see Fulham capitalising on that for a, for a goal, maybe taking the lead, um, maybe opening the scoring, but... We'll, Whatever they'll do, they'll either fight back or they'll just dominate from the start. Yeah, it's not going to be a repeat of that opening match though. And then we move on to Manchester City versus West Ham United. Manchester City host the Hammers in their continued battle to retain the title. Man City are on fire at the moment, both in Europe and domestically. Whereas West Ham, they're doing alright for themselves in Europe, but don't look solid in the league. As mentioned, West Ham are performing at the best this season, but do sit 5 points clear of the relegation zone. So there's a bit of a cushion for them. Uh, Manchester City need to avoid dropping points if they want to keep pace with Arsenal and eventually overtake them for the title and I can see them doing that. I'm going to say 3-0. I can't really see Manchester City being too tr I can't really see Manchester City being too troubled by this London side. We've seen West Ham get dominated multiple times this season and if anyone's going to do it it'll be Manchester City. I think while West Ham you know they've showed up performances recently I just think this Manchester City side will be too much for them. But, you know, they've done well to get where they are. You know, five points clear of the relegation zone. If they do lose this match, it's not the end of the world. I think it's pretty fair enough to say that West Ham will get destroyed by Manchester City because they're just a on fire side at the moment and they're gunning for the title. So they need to get something from this match. And I can't see them dropping points in any of their last fixes, to be honest. And finally, Brighton Hove Albion versus Manchester United. Now, this is a repeat of the FA Cup for these two sides. And Brighton will be looking and hoping that history doesn't repeat itself. Brighton held up really well against United in that fixture and won the better side in some aspects, but ultimately they couldn't win it. The games are coming thick and fast for Brighton, not really giving them much chance to rest as a squad. Without much quality depth, it's going to be really tough for them. They don't have the time to rest or recover, and just mentally it's going to be really tough on them as well, especially if they keep losing. Same does go for United though, their games are coming thick and fast too, not giving them much chance for a rest, but mentally they're in a much better place than Brighton, especially as they've got the FA Cup final to look forward to. I'm saying 2-1 to Brighton though. I do think Brighton will be out for revenge and I can see them getting it. We saw United drop points to Spurs and I'd say that currently this Brighton side is better than Chicken Ball FC. I can see them being able to keep United fairly quiet in Sussex. Um, it could be a shock result but somebody's just telling me that Brighton will get their revenge against Manchester United and I think it'd be scenes if Solly Marsh scored the winner. That would be, that'd be, that'd be quality to be fair. Anyway, be no 2 gt Please post your predictions in the comments and I'll see you guys later. Peace.